Hey, what's up? It's Donna. So last week when I was talking about where I was for a month, I was researching cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. A few of you requested that I explain Bitcoin. I know a lot of my viewers aren't cryptocurrency enthusiasts, so I'm going to explain it in a very simplified and basic way. At its very basic essence, Bitcoin is a digital currency. Now, a lot of people say it's more of a store of value, and that's true in a sense because people aren't really spending it. Um, a lot of merchants still don't accept it but its main purpose was to be a digital currency. So it can be described as a worldwide cryptocurrency digital payment system. So there isn't a Bitcoin USA, a Bitcoin Japan, Bitcoin Germany. Um, globally, people just use Bitcoin. And it's also decentralized, meaning that there aren't any banks involved. Um, it's very peer to peer. So I can send whoever I want Bitcoin and there is no middleman. So this was created by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008. The Satoshi Nakamoto is anonymous. Nobody knows if he or she is a man or a woman. Satoshi Nakamoto can also be a collective group of people. So I think the best way to explain Bitcoin is to first explain money. I'm from the US, so I use the US dollar. The dollar, also known as fiat currency, it has value because it's government backed. And as a society, we agree that it has value. So we agree that 50 of these dollar bills can be used to buy this, or five of these dollar bills can be used to buy this. Yes, these are my notes. What if all of a sudden I earn a hundred thousand dollars of these dollar bills? Now there are problems that arise with that. So the first problem is that if I just keep them in my house, one, my house can burn down and I lose all that money. Two, someone can come into my house and steal that money and I lose all that money. Three, it's just hard to manage in general. If I have $100,000 of these bills and I'm spending these and I'm earning these things, it can be hard to manage. So the best solution is to keep all this money in a bank. The basic principles of a bank is that it works with a ledger system. Say I deposit $100,000 of that money into the bank. I wanna send, say, $2,000 to someone across the country in, say, Kansas. Option one, I can withdraw cash, fly over to Kansas, and hand them the money. Obviously, no normal person does that. And if you wanna send them money, you send it through the bank. Now, someone from the bank doesn't take $2,000, goes on a plane, and sends it to the person in Kansas. They work with a ledger system. So it'll say something like, Donna sends person in Kansas $2,000. And it'll say negative $2,000. This kind of syncs with the bank in Kansas and says $2,000 is with this person from Donna. Bitcoin works with this similar principle, but Bitcoin works with the blockchain. And this is a digital ledger system that Bitcoin uses. And it's decentralized, meaning that no one owns this ledger, but also everyone who participates in Bitcoin owns this ledger. Everyone who participate has a Bitcoin address. And so if I want to send you one Bitcoin, I'm not sending you a digital file. What's happening is that that transaction is placed on the ledger. So it'll say Donna sends you one Bitcoin. And so that ledger keeps track of how many Bitcoins people have, transactions between peers, and so forth. Okay, so now you're thinking, wait, so if this ledger is online, can't it be easily accessible to hackers? What stops a hacker from saying, instead of sending one Bitcoin to you, it's going to say Donna sends me 10 Bitcoin. So the blockchain works on a unique system that keeps it safe. To keep it safe, each transaction is kept in check by miners. Now, basically miners are volunteers that volunteer to keep each transaction in check. So there can be a miner in Australia, a miner in Japan, and a miner in Germany. So when I'm sending you one Bitcoin, each miner oversees this transaction. The miner in Japan can say, okay, yes, I see Donna is sending you one Bitcoin. The miner in Germany can say, yep, this is what I see. And the miner in Australia will say, yep, this is what I see. So say a hacker becomes a miner and the hacker says, no, Donna is sending me 10 Bitcoin. And since previous miners have already confirmed that I'm sending you one Bitcoin, that transaction is officially updated on the ledger. So in order for the hacker to succeed, he must hack the miner in Japan, in Australia, and in Germany. And so far, the Bitcoin network has not been hacked. It's obviously a much more complex system. So if you wanna learn about things like proof of stake versus proof of work, hash function, algorithm altogether, I will leave videos down in the description below describing those things more into detail. But since I know that a lot of you are cryptocurrency beginners and Bitcoin beginners, I didn't want to overcomplicate things and have things just go over your head and for you to just quit because you think it's too complicated because Bitcoin is supposed to be used by everyone. I hope you liked the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.